I get this question all the time. How did I get into cosmetic dermatology? How did I get into injectables? And how can you get into this similar field? Hi, Beauty Boosters, it's Nurse Practitioner Anissa. I'm so excited to film this video for you all. This is my most requested video and question. How did I get into cosmetic dermatology? I'm so excited to tell you about my journey and then I'm gonna offer you guys some advice if you are interested in getting in this field as well because I think it's an awesome field for young girls to get into. So let's get started. So I went to Huntington Beach High School. So I was always very active. I was in the swim team. I was in the ASB, Associate Student Body, a senior class president. And I took every advanced placement class possible. The reason why is because I really wanted this high GPA and extracurricular activities. So I was well-rounded to get into the college of my choice. I applied to three colleges, UC Irvine, UCLA, and USC. Really wanted to go to USC or UCLA. My heart was in LA. And the one school I didn't want to get into was UCI. So I got into UCI, didn't get into the other colleges, but thank God, everything happens for a reason. There I study sciences. I love sciences, but for some reason, my heart was just not into medical school. So I told my dad as a sophomore, I'm dropping out. I'm going to beauty school because that was where my heart was. I wanted to be a math makeup artist. That was my aspiration. But my new father said, you are getting your education, or should I say, you're getting your degree and you're getting your bachelor's. So I went on to study and I was thinking, what could be a good hybrid to combine science and beauty? And it just came to me. I'm like, okay, cosmetic dermatology. Let's see if I would be interested. So I went into an internship with this dermatologist in San Juan Capistrano, and he's a very, very busy guy. Loved him so much, but he was so busy that he kept putting me with this nurse practitioner. And my immediate thought was, I don't want to be with a nurse. What does a nurse know? You know, I wanted to follow the dermatologist. I wanted to know if this is a field that I wanted to go into after all. So I later discovered that this nurse practitioner did everything the doctor did. She was so comprehensive with her patients. She sat down, the patients loved her, and she was walking through the entire treatment plan. She was beautiful. She did essentially what the doctor did. Wrote prescriptions, diagnosed, treated, was truly comprehensive and patient-centered. So I knew I wanted to be just like her. So that year, UCI opened up their first year ever of their nursing school. So I applied to this program. It was very, very competitive. This is a program where if you're not accredited yet, they pick the top, top students in order to get through the accreditation process. So I think there was like 956 that applied the year I got in and only 46 um, were accepted. So that to me was very, very stressful. The counselor said, you'll never get in. This is something that only 4.0 students could um, get into. And I already knew I had a couple of B's. So I pressed on. I tried to ace every science class under the sun at UC Irvine. And lo and behold, I got into the programs. I'm super, super happy that I got into it. It was very, very hard and very stressful. I decided to do a minor in sociology while I was in nursing school because I wanted to have, again, more well-roundedness and also kind of helped my GPA, to be honest. I knew I wanted to go into grad school because again, my end goal was to be a nurse practitioner. So I graduated with my bachelor's in nursing and a minor in sociology. I think my GPA at the time was a 3.6. And then I knew I wanted to go into grad school. The only way you can get into grad school as a nurse practitioner is to have background as a bedside nurse. So I decided to go straight into the intensive care unit. To me, that was the ultimate floor where you could find the most severe sicknesses and illnesses and learn how to manage it and treat it. And I just wanted to get that under my belt so I can go straight into grad school. So I did the intensive care unit nursing for about cumulatively four and a half years. And it was some of the hardest times of my life, guys. I don't think it's right for anyone to see anyone actively dying, but it really, really built character. It really made me a stronger clinician, in my opinion. I applied to several nurse practitioner programs all throughout Southern California because I knew I wanted to be close to my family. And one of the top programs at the time was University of San Diego. So I applied to that program, got in, was super, super excited because it was in San Diego. There's something about San Diego, guys, that is, I think every young person should experience living there because it is such a fascinating city. There's three different colleges in, the, in one area, a bunch of young students, and it's just a great atmosphere to be in in terms of graduate education, in my opinion. But when I got into the nurse practitioner program at USD, it was just for master's. 
So when I applied to the nurse practitioner program for USD, I actually applied for their DNP route. DNP is a doctorate in nursing practice. So you essentially get your doctorate as a, as a nurse practitioner. I decided to get my doctorate as a nurse practitioner in family medicine. The reason why is because you could treat anyone from infancy to death. So you really have a broad spectrum of who you treat as a future mid-level provider. There are other routes as a nurse practitioner you can take. There's acute care nursing where you are located in the hospital. There is geriatrics nurse practitioner where you are specializing in elderly care. There are pediatric nurse practitioners. There's neonatal ones, but I decided to do family because it gave me, again, the more broader approach. So again, this is an accelerated program. So I had just graduated from my bachelor's program at UC Irvine. I went into ICU nursing night shift for a full year, and then I applied to USD. And USD was again, bachelor's to DNP, and it's a three year accelerated program. There, I did work part-time. It was again, so hard. It was in school full-time, working in the ICU part-time. So my schedule looked like lecture three times a week, clinical rotations two times a week, and then I work twice a week. So six out of seven days, guys, I was working my booty off. But you know, these were some of the hardest times of my life. I remember in the summer, I would be studying at the law library at USD and all my friends were at the beach having a great time. And I was in this icy, cold, dark library. And I just remember thinking like, I can't wait to be done with my program so I can enjoy my friends. My last year of the DMP program, I was burnt out. I was fatigued. I remember telling my parents, I'm done. I just want to get out of this. I just want to be a normal 23, 24 year old girl and enjoy. And thank God I had great parents and great support that really pushed me through the program because without them, I don't know how I would have done it, honestly. When I graduated from USD, I was 26 at the time. And it's, it's interesting to say this, but I'm actually the youngest in the nation to have graduated with my DNP. This was back in 2015. The Board of Registered Nursing, the BRN, um, had given me a certificate saying that I was the youngest to accomplish this degree, and it was such a huge reward. So again, I'm so happy I stuck it through the program, and I just want to instill that in all of you girls that are going through a hard time in college or school, or you got a bad grade on a test, or a bad grade in a class, just know that this does not define your future. You know, just keep pushing through, and you will accomplish that degree and you know when people ask you about your schooling or your education the first thing that doesn't come out of their mouth is what is your gpa i still have not had that question asked since i've graduated nobody asks what they care about is your degree do you have your bachelor's do you have your master's do you have your you know graduate education and that is something that no one will ever take away from you. So just remember that whenever you go through something hard, and this does not define you as a person. But I went on, graduated, and I knew that I loved, again, the cosmetic dermatology field. So what better way to start in the medical spa because you can get hands-on injectables. So I applied to this medical spa in San Diego. It was like located in the downtown area. They offered all these different services like IVs and lasers and injectables. And I thought, this is such a great place to learn. And I was so fortunate that they took me on as a new grad who had no experience to teach me pretty much everything about aesthetics. So there I did learn my basics for Botox and fillers and IV hydration and weight loss programs, um, different lasers, modalities. And that gave me a really, really great basis. Um, unfortunately, the position didn't work out. I wanted to move back to Orange County. So I moved back um, where I was closer to my parents and I applied to UC Irvine Department of Plastic Surgery. Now, you might be asking, why did I move from the medical spa world to something that's plastic surgery? And I think in my head at the time, I really craved the academic world. I really loved evidence-based practice. I loved being around other clinicians that wanted to further their education and um, really practice what they preach. So when I applied for the position, it was the first ever nurse practitioner position at UC Irvine Department of Plastic Surgery. I went through a couple rounds of panel interviews with the department. And I was just, you know, honestly, I was so lucky to be their first ever NP. Um, there, they wanted me to assist in the operating room. They said, you know, Anissa, would you like to get your RNFA, which is your registered nurse? First assist, it's a certificate program where you're in the operating room with the surgeons 
assisting them, maybe handing them instruments, suturing for them, prepping the patient. As much as I loved plastic surgery, I loved everything transformational. I really wanted to go back into hands-on cosmetics because in my opinion, me being in the operating room and not interacting with patients, I felt that I wasn't doing my full job as a nurse practitioner that I essentially studied for and envisioned my future. So I had left the university after being there for two years and I went on to a couple other medical spas in Orange County and I went back into injectables. I just knew I loved it. I loved making women feel good about themselves and making it natural. And I decided to open up my own medical spa because I had an idea of what beauty looked like in my eyes. I really, really love the natural look. And I think being in Orange County, we do see a lot of women, unfortunately, where they've either gone too far or their provider has gone too far. And to me, that was so disturbing because injectables are really made to restore or rejuvenate where you once were or slightly enhance your already natural features. And I wanted to practice that for my patients. So I opened up Beauty Boost MedSoft and I chose to call it Beauty Boost because I wanted to boost your underlying beauty. So I didn't want to augment anyone. Um, for example, for lips, I love injecting lips. You guys can see on my page that we have some really cool before and afters for lips, but I wanted to keep people looking nice and natural and plump and lump free and symmetrical and this can really be accomplished if you know how to do it strategically. How did I learn these injections? I modeled other injectors. I watched so many videos. I attended many lectures on injections and I really wanted to master the craft. So if I can offer any advice to future injectors is it really comes down to the hands-on experience. Of course, learning your basics in terms of anatomy is extremely, extremely important. Reading material on injectables is extremely, extremely important. However, when it comes down to it, your practicing of your dexterity is something that's gonna help refine your technique. Okay guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna to continue to watch more videos like this. If you have any suggestions for future content, go ahead and comment below. Also be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook for little clips of cosmetic injectables. Thank you so much, bye.